Do you ever experience gas, bloating, heartburn, this GERD sensation? Well, it may not be the reason that you think. So in today's video, I'm going to get into this and much more. Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Stephanie from Fast Track to Health Wellness Center. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will keep you up to date on the latest in natural health, weight loss, and wellness. So in today's video, I'm gonna discuss something very near and dear to my heart, digestion issues, okay? So it's a very common problem that I see in my clinic week after week. People have all kinds of GI issues, gas, bloating, and especially heartburn. So most people always assume, well, if I have heartburn, then I must have too much acid in my stomach. Well, believe it or not, that's actually the opposite of what's happening. So let's get into a little bit of physiology and anatomy first before we move on to why this might be happening. So every part of the digestive tract is actually a different pH. So the stomach actually needs to be very acidic. So the normal pH for the stomach is between one and three, okay, which is pretty acidic. Now, there are many reasons for this. Number one, it's a way to keep bugs out of our body. So when we eat foods, we eat things and ingest things, with the stomach being acidic, it keeps bugs and pathogens from going into the rest of our body. So it's a very smart mechanism that's created by the body. Second, protein digestion. So protein digestion begins in the stomach, okay? So we have enzymes that are secreted in the stomach that really help break down protein. And lastly, the stomach is also where vitamin and mineral absorption starts to take place. So if your stomach isn't acidic enough, you might wind up having deficiencies in certain very important vitamins and minerals, in particular, vitamin B12, iron, and calcium. So if you have these symptoms of heartburn, gas, smelly gas, especially bloating, especially right after meals, it's usually a sign that something is going on with the pH of your stomach, okay? So as we age, the amount of acid that we produce in the stomach actually starts to decline. So you hear all the time, well, it's probably too much acid and I need to block it with an acid blocker. Well, actually acid blockers are making the situation much worse. And that's obviously the go-to remedy that doctors give to patients and people buy things over the counter. And while it might make you feel better temporarily, in the long run, it's actually shutting down your digestion and allowing all of these other things to happen long term. So the last thing you really wanna do is block stomach acid, okay? Let me give you another couple of examples of things that might contribute to this acid issue, okay? Not only do we produce less as we age, but stress and hormonal imbalances are other reasons why we might naturally produce less stomach acid over time. Now, to how to find out if you really do have too little acid instead of too much, it's not as easy as you think, and the one of the main tests called the Heidelberg test, where they actually put something down your throat and scope it, is it's never done. It's hardly ever done. There are some at-home tests that you can do. Um, I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. You could also look in some of your lab tests. Some of your blood work can tell you if your chloride levels are under 100, that might be an indicator that your um, hydrochloric acid level is low. But in general, it's not always so easy to tell. But like I said, it's the most common thing. Uh, one of the things about the acid blockers, so studies are now coming out to show the long-term damage of using these PPIs, these proton pump inhibitors, TUMs and things like that. The long-term consequence of this can be very pretty serious you might wind up eventually getting osteoporosis even cancer because like I said if you're not digesting your food properly at the very beginning of the digestive tract it could really set you up for problems all the way down so even down to the small intestine and the large intestine it's gonna affect it because the pH level is different in each part of the, the digestive tract the stomach is very acidic the small intestine is alkaline and then the large intestine is acidic again so this whole thing that's going on right now about everyone should alkalize, everyone's too acidic, it's just not true. Each part of the body is a different pH and they need to be addressed accordingly. So don't fall for that whole thing and I'm gonna make future videos on that. So the main things I want you guys to get out of this is probably the reason that you're having a lot of these GI symptoms, especially heartburn, gas, and bloating, is because you're not making enough stomach acid. The reason is probably not because you have too much stomach acid, okay guys? 
So this is what I want you to understand. Now in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna get into some ways that you can enhance the production of your own stomach acid, foods that you can either add or minimize, and supplements that you can take to help out. So stay tuned for the next episode. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Thank you.